more of everything doesn't always mean better of everything. I've gotten into the habit of delivering part of my conclusion right at the top of my video, so I'm happy to report I really like this phone. But for the improvements over last year's V30, I think it's gotten a little more difficult to pin down exactly who this phone might be for. If we believe you can find a perfect fit for you, the V40 seems to require a bit more pro and con discussion than last year's V series phone. Now, starting off with the design, I'm seriously considering cutting the design section of my reviews. If it's a glass on glass sandwich, why bother commenting since many people will slap on a case anyway? I don't know, leave me your thoughts down in the comments below this video. Where LG finally nailed their aesthetic with the G6, and they've been steadily refining to now the V40, we've all kind of arrived at a very similar look. This year's LG feels a lot like a galaxy in the hand. Tapered glass, curved sides, dedicated assistant hardware button. If you wanted to know what a Galaxy S9 would look like with a notch, it would probably look like this. And I've already made the joke in a previous video that the rear looks like Triclops from He-Man. So I just recycled that joke here again. But a positive for this hardware layout, I really do like having both USB and headphone jack on the bottom. It has happened where I've been listening to music and also needing to charge my phone. And it's nice keeping both cables pointing in the same direction. The hardware on tap is what we would expect for a 2018 flagship. You can pause here if you wanna read through the specs. Now, one of the more controversial aspects of last year's LG phones, OLED quality would seem to have improved as I haven't heard any serious complaints on the V40. I luckily had a fine experience with the V30, so I can't point to anything specifically better this year. We get a very similar great contrast ratio and the phone handles bright direct light pretty well. But we're talking about screens and I still hate notches. And I hope that's a trend that dies over the next year. Where LG also feels more like Samsung are the subtle changes to the software experience. I really dislike changing directions on the app drawer, swiping up to get your apps and then swiping laterally to slide through pages. This solves no issues when compared to just a regular vertical app drawer. It's not better, it's just different. As with most of my review phones, I've switched over to Nova Launcher and the V40 represents my first Android to use a single home screen. I'm trying to minimize distraction and improve the quality of every interaction I have with technology. And getting around common Samsung and LG UI elements seems to help me stay more focused on individual interactions. Combine that with a few tweaks, like a dark theme, and we arrive at a clean and simple look without much difficulty or gnashing of teeth. LG has packed on a ton of add-on software when you first boot it up out of the box, but where I would normally ignore it or outright pan it, a few things have proven useful. First, the not so good. We have some silly duplication for camera controls. The power button and each individual volume key can launch the camera or take a photo. When one of the key features of an LG is a crazy loud headphone amp, you kinda don't want to use the volume rocker for anything other than controlling the volume of your audio. Similarly, I really don't like being forced to have a button on my phone that only launches Google Assistant or does nothing. I've actually been using Google Assistant a lot more thanks to support being built into some Bluetooth headphones, but more often than not, a button on my phone just gets in the way or is accidentally pressed when I don't want to. Also, I've been trying to use other services lately than having all my digital eggs in Google's basket. It would be nice to switch over to something else like DuckDuckGo for general search. But now onto the good things, LG continues to offer phenomenal support for taller displays. Out of the box, my V40 was set to full resolution on this beautiful 3K screen. LG joined Samsung with great controls for customizing navigation buttons, supporting a mini view, which helps with such a tall form factor, tons of options for tailoring display, color tone, and hue with an auto HDR mode, and LG continues to offer one of the better app scaling options. I have a few legacy apps that either don't handle the new form factor well or outright crash at launch. 
being able to lock an older app to 16 by 9 is very helpful. We get some pleasant improvements looking at performance. Uh, checking out Geekbench, it outperforms the LG G7 and is within spitting distance of the OnePlus 6. That's confirmed by some of our work tests. The V40 renders video faster than the G7 and is within margin of error in a video stabilizing test. For work, content creation, editing, all the things LG is highlighting with this release, the V40 lives up to those claims. What I can't sort then is why gaming performance is still so shaky. Looking at a handful of games, especially those with high quality graphics settings, the V40's gaming mode seems to get in the way more than, say, a OnePlus. There are noticeably more dropped frames and a lot more stuttering on an LG. That's kind of a bummer. I think mobile gaming could be a legit option with better games. It's just odd that the V40 improves so much for work while still stumbling a bit on the fun stuff. Continuing with performance, I got great radio reception and bandwidth on LTE and Wi-Fi. Qualcomm really is crushing this right now, where on Project 5, which pretty much just defaults to T-Mobile, the V40 handily outperforms the iPhone XS. Better reception and faster data speeds. It's scary to think the antennas are even worse on the iPhone XR, but I digress. LG is doing great here. You shouldn't have any issues with reception. Okay, moving on over to the optics, I have a full 27 minute review on the cameras, which you can check out over at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. And I've posted the conclusion to that review publicly on this YouTube channel. LG still represents one of the best platforms for content creation out of the box. The best collection of manual modes, audio support, and now with an improved main camera sensor. Very welcome improvements, though that's balanced by some distracting rough spots and generally unrefined fun features. Again, it's a 27 minute review. It's a deep dive going over everything this phone has to offer, so you should check it out over on Patreon. And the audio conversation is just stellar. I also have a full review of the AudioTech headphone jack and boombox speaker mode there aren't any surprises there. You know what I'm gonna say, LG is the best. Objectively, true audiophile output for cables, the same support for Bluetooth as any other manufacturer, and a crazy loud speaker, really well done. And these are lifestyle features which should still be true differentiators against the competition, but are often overlooked in other smartphone discussions. If you wanna see the charts and graphs on this, again, patreon.com slash some gadget guy. But all this cool tech isn't much to talk about if your battery can't keep you running, and this is where the V40 is really hard to pin down. Benchmarking, the V40 did really well, like my video streaming test. The V40 improves noticeably over the G7. That's great. And tackling an average day of use, I often got over five and a half hours of screen on time, even for how heavily I use my phones with the screens off, which is awesome, but it wasn't consistent. I routinely ran into situations where I'd get to dinner time and I'd be running on fumes and even for two decent updates from LG, the battery life feels less consistent for my daily interactions than the G7 did, which is odd. Definitely, certainly could have benefited from a larger battery, where I have more headroom or sometimes even two days of use on a OnePlus or a Huawei. And since I did occasionally have to top this off during the day, Qualcomm's quick charge tech is respectable, but color me spoiled. Again, Huawei and OnePlus. Now, happily, the V40 can handily outperform, say, an iPhone with a stock charger. Regardless, you've got good options. A slower top off, which keeps the phone fairly cool if you use a Qi charger. A faster recharge, which should get you almost a day of use when plugged in for about a half hour. The battery situation isn't a deal breaker, but if you really use what this phone has to offer, quad DAX, big screen, loudspeaker, five cameras, it is a pain point the user has to manage more than on some of the competition. Just those competitors might not have some of the same hardware perks. Lastly, one additional omission that really bugged me personally, like the G7, the V40 no longer supports video out through the USB port. No more HDMI. Even though LG doesn't have a desktop mode like Huawei or Samsung DeX, it was still helpful to be able to plug into an external display. I even did that on local TV news to show off how smartphone cameras work. You can go wireless, but that's more complicated and less reliable, and it reduces playback quality if you watch a video. 
And it's just a bummer. If the V is for pros, this is something I think pros would want to occasionally use. Whew. So that's enough rambling from me. Where does that leave us with the LG V40? To focus just on the five cameras is to miss a lot of other performance improvements. Honestly, focusing on the five cameras also likely means you're missing out on some core photography improvements. But overall, the argument for the V-Series phones is delivering a powerful device that should deliver for content creation and top tier multimedia consumption. This premium space is super competitive. And happily, the V40 still largely lives up to the claims of the manufacturer. What's trickier for LG isn't some notion of competition from Samsung or Apple. They don't make phones that really fight the V. Instead, competition internally from the G7 is getting a bit tighter. I would say the V40 is the better phone, but like we might point to OnePlus, you can get almost everything the V40 offers as a differentiator, headphone performance, great camera manual controls, and a slightly nicer boombox speaker mode for a significant savings after recent price drops. It's sad we just expect those prices on LG phones to fall after launch. This hardware is great and still faces precious little competition for what LG has focused on. I just worry that this business model will prove unsustainable. Again, some old fashioned ideas. LG stands as one of the only options in this space now. I'd be really sad to lose these kinds of features if more manufacturers and LG decide to pivot and focus on less expensive tiers. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing, for subscribing. There's plenty more to chat about on the LG V40, and I'll likely be using it as my daily driver in Vegas for CES. If you want to see how these cameras really perform, you can catch that full deep dive on patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Also, be sure to check out my V40 versus V30 comparison, which was produced, edited, mostly shot, and rendered on the V40. And the follow-up, what did we learn video, which was shot on the V40 in UHD at 60 frames per second. That video almost broke my workstation. So you should watch that. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Facebooks, the Twitters, and the Instagrams, and I will catch you all on the next review.